Thank you for allowing me the time to come out and visit with the folks today. Uh, I tell you, I was just in the neighborhood, but that wouldn't be the truth. So. Uh, I, uh, my name is Tim Nolf. I've taught down in Independence, Kansas at the high school for the last short 27 years. And you know that some years are longer than others. This is one of the short years, so it's, it's a good thing. I also serve on the board of directors for KNA. I've been on a board member for the last five years, serving Southeast UNSERV. Uh, where Sherry is from the north end of Kansas, I am down at the other end of the south end. We're about 40 miles from the Oklahoma border down there. Our UNSERV has about 1,300 members in it with 28 different locals. Uh, I've been very active in the association in the last 15 to 20 years as well. Most recently, uh, at the local level in our association, I've served as president for the last uh, Excuse me. Two years, two times over the last five years, uh, I've served as building rep, secretary of our association. At the youth serve level, I've been real active in bargaining. I serve as our on the executive committee and also as their representative on the board. And at the national level, I serve NEA on the membership affiliation and uh, resources committee, which has to do with generating membership for the association. Uh, at the community level, I've been very active in different aspects of the community. I serve, currently serve on two boards of directors in our community. One is a credit union, and the other is a nursing home facility. So uh, I realize how relevant the bottom line is to any business, and especially ours right now as we look to the future. I just came off the budget and audit committee from serving for the last two years. I know how difficult the budget is this year. In the last two years, I know we shaved as much as we could off different parts of the budget. This year was even more of a challenge, which we're going to continue to discuss probably all the way to the RA this year. But challenge is not necessarily a bad thing. Challenge provides an opportunity for innovation in any association. KEA has to learn to do things differently. Not because what we've been doing in the past has been wrong, but because we've been forced to change. Our paradigm in the state has shifted. The last election uh, dramatically changed the structure of power in the legislature, and we no longer have the cushion we had before. We are two votes shy of being Wisconsin in the Senate right now. That's a scary thought. When you talk and visit with folks from Wisconsin, and we had the opportunity at the National RA in Chicago to do that, we stayed in the same hotel that uh, our friends from Wisconsin were at. During the uh, NEA, RA up there, I was able to go over and visit with Mary Bell for just a few short minutes. She is the president of the Wisconsin Association. And uh, her advice to me was real simple. She took a look at my big sunflower hanging around my neck and she said, watch out, Kansas, you're next. She said, your governor and my governor are on speed dial to each other. And as we see what's happening politically in the state, we know that the Senate's in play. All the moderate senators have been told either toe the line and vote with the governor or they'll have primary challengers. 13 moderates in the Senate right now, and I don't have challengers. Our job has to be, one of our top priorities is member advocacy. If we don't activate our members, if we don't educate our members, and let them know what's going on in the state legislature and what the balance hangs as, and the balance is our careers, how we've done things in the state for the last 17, 18 years since the school finance formula was changed back in 92. We cannot afford to let this opportunity pass and be complacent. Most of the moderates we lost in the House the last go around were because we didn't, we didn't get our members out to vote. We were complacent. We cannot make that mistake again. So member, member advocacy, as Sherry said, and, and I will reiterate, we are very concerned about that mistake. In the next few months, you're going to be checking, we're going to be having elections to determine who's going to represent you in the Senate as well as in the House. We have to get to the polls. We have to get our members to the polls and make sure that we retain control of the Senate. That's the only thing stopping everything you've been seeing. You get under the dome, under the dome from Topeka, Mark Cassetti's little post he puts out every, every day of what happens in the, in the Capitol. You've seen payroll deduction been threatened. You've seen bargaining rights threat, using teacher evaluations. This is a new one this year, teacher evaluations posted online. The only thing stopping all that stuff that came down the pipe last year was the leadership in the Senate, and they are targeted this year. If we don't save those folks and we don't build on our majority, we are, take the 
tracer out and scratch off Kansas on the map, put Wisconsin to there. That's where we're at. That critical. The other priority our association needs to look at seriously is membership. Membership drives association. Just like any association out there, the more members you have, the more vocal your voice is. Ours reflects around what we're able to do financially also for the association, the goods and services we're able to deliver to our members that they need. And as I said before, we need to learn to do things just a little bit smarter than we have in the past because there are different ways to do things and still deliver the same goods. One example I'll give you is what we did down in southeast Kansas this summer. We had our own bargaining academy for our members down there. We had 24 members. Uh, most were from southeast, and then you serve right above us, Six Rivers, I think, had six members. Instead of sending all 24 folks up to Topeka to be put up for three nights in motel rooms and fed and paid mileage and everything, we brought Wade Anderson down to southeast Kansas. Wade Anderson had three hotel bills, three, three nights for hotels, and a couple meals that we didn't provide. We saved the association probably close to $1,000 just by doing that. There are different ways to deliver the same goods and services that we enjoy today, but there are smarter ways to do it too. We have to think of them, and we have to figure out how we can do that for our membership. Membership is critical because if we, if we don't get the support of our local, then the state association becomes weak. In Independence, three years ago, we took a hard look at our membership. We were at 68% market share. Of all the teachers in the district, we had 68% of them. And we thought we could do better than that. So we sat down one evening with all our building leaders, with all our exec board, brought in Kevin Scarroll from Topeka, and we brought in our Uniserve director and sat down for three and a half hours and looked at who wasn't a member and why. And then we targeted them. Our goal was that in three years, we wanted to be at 90%. This is our third year. We finished at 93, but we're not done. There's a few more hanging on the limb we're going to grab before the end of the year. That's the kind of leadership, and that's the kind of direction our association needs to take in the next few years. If we don't, if we continue to decline, and unfortunately, in the last three years, we've lost about 10% of our membership statewide, projecting another 800 member loss this year. We cannot continue to do that. We have to get out, motivate, innovate, generate some interest from those folks who in the past have not only told us, no, I don't want to be a member, but sometimes they've told us, hell no, I don't want to be a member. They're on, they're, their job's on the line, too, with the new legislation coming out. We have to show them how KNEA can meet their needs and deliver the good that they need, that they need to be a strong professional. In my line of work, and I'm kind of out of home here because I'm usually at the other end of the building where all the noise is at, uh, not good noise, but... Noise, noise. Uh, at the end of the day or the end of the week, whatever, we have a product that we produce of some sort. It's like in the band room, they want to get a piece just right for the competition of the marching festival. We have a product we have to produce. If you think about it for a minute, there's no other industry out there that you can think of that's being asked to produce a 2012 product like you are in the classroom with $19.92. That's what you're being asked to do. That cannot continue. The current funding formula that the governor has proposed cannot be put forward. It locks in 3780 from now until whoever knows when. And the only way to increase any budget is for you to ask your school board to raise property taxes. And we all know how well that's going to go. There's an alternate proposal in the Senate right in, in the legislature right now proposed by the Democrats that takes the state revenue surplus, and yes, we do have surplus. We've ran surpluses for the last seven months now, and takes that money and conservatively, bless their heart, puts it back to some of the cuts that have taken place over the last few years. If we don't restore those cuts, we're gonna go farther and farther down the state standards. We cannot continue to perform at the level we have with less money each year. It's impossibility, it's not fair. No one else is being asked to do that. We are the experts in the classroom. We need to be the ones driving the bus on this issue. If we don't, we're going to be in trouble. Lastly, uh, I want to finish this up by saying one of these days I hope my daughter's in a room like this because she's studying vocal music at Pittsburgh State University. She's got a couple more years. She told me three. I told her two. The budget was only built for two more. <laughs> I think it's going to be three. I think it's my responsibility, not as an educator, but also as a parent, to leave the profession.
information just a little bit better than I found it 27 years ago for the next generation of teachers. And I want to take that attitude. I want to take the leadership ability that I've been able to work with in the Southeast, been on the board of directors, to the state level, and help drive the association forward in the coming years. I appreciate your attention today. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. I ask you to join me in helping.